Hello and welcome back to the Entertainment Vortex. We were at Brendan Theatres today watching Hellboy. This one's an interesting one. Really liked the Guillermo del Toro movies, and I don't have a lot of experience with the comics, but Nick does. So we got a couple of different perspectives watching this film, and it's kind of a doozy. There are some good elements. We'll kind of open up with some of those. I felt like the acting performances were, were pretty solid. I liked David Harbour as the lead, and I felt like he had kind of like some of like the quippy dialogue down pretty well. When he had emotional reactions to things, I felt like those were well deserved and well placed. Ancillary characters around him, they all worked pretty well as well. I mean, I wouldn't say there's any Oscar worthy performances for sure. Like I said, they were serviceable performances, and I think had they been part of a better script and a better story, they may have worked even better and it would have been a you know a really solid comic book movie. According to Nick, some of the uh, locations that they chose, some of the ones that they created using CG, were actually very true to the comics and that a lot of the plots and a lot of the characters used were very true to the way that they operate in the comic books, which I know a lot of fans of Hellboy will be uh, very excited about that type of a, a prospect. The biggest problems, though, come from a few key things that really just make this movie fall apart at the seams. The storyline, it wants to do so many different things and go in so many different directions. Uh, when we finished the movie, Nick turned to me and he said it felt like they, like four different people made a little chunk of this movie and then they all just matched it together. Felt like it wanted to emulate a lot of things that currently exist out in, in popular culture. They wanted to make something that had some similarities to Guardians of the Galaxy. They wanted to make something that had similarities to Deadpool. They wanted to make something that had a lot of gore and a lot of horror elements tied into it. Those things being combined in maybe a more subtle way wouldn't make as bad a movie, but because you just get hammered over the head with every concept, it just doesn't work. None of it fits together. It's like you're taking pieces from Jenga and pieces from a puzzle and then pieces from Monopoly and trying to put it all together and say, oh, I made an image. None of that works. The music also falls flat in a lot of places. Uh, it uses a lot of popular songs and for Nick, that didn't work very well. And for me, I didn't like what they did with the original score. They took a lot of things from those different eras and they tried to tie it all together and make this mismatched music, which obviously matches the tone of a mismatched movie where things don't all fit together but it just didn't work it didn't elicit any emotions it didn't make anything exciting it tried to take concepts that have worked with other movies like guardians of the galaxy and tie in music you know popular music to make scenes work better it didn't land the range of music that they chose was too far and reached too many different eras and it just didn't all tie back together especially considering they tried to make the score based off of all of those songs you get little pieces of weird stuff here and there you get like these weird like heavy metal guitar riffs and then you get like dubstep and like all this other weird stuff and it just felt dated because of that and i don't feel like other movies that have better utilized music from other eras have made themselves feel dated. I think the biggest sin that this movie commits is that it tells you almost everything and shows you almost nothing. I mean, the first 45 minutes are just a constant exposition dump. You know, here's more information. Oh, you wanted a little bit of something? No, here's more information. And they just tell you everything. through different narrations over the top of things. And it just pretends like you're five and tries to explain everything for you. When you could show a lot of those things, or maybe even peel back some of the layers and take away some of the things that you felt like were necessary to make this story work that weren't, you could have told a much more cohesive story by actually showing us something and not just trying to tell us the entire backstory of Hellboy before we actually get to sit in for the last 45 minutes of the movie. Because of that, it makes so many other nitpicky things feel like big deals. Like, there are some places where the CGI wasn't very great, and because you're not interested in the movie, those things stick out like sore thumbs. That's unfortunate, because if the plotline had been better, and if they had showed you more things rather than telling you those things, and the music had been a little more cohesive and tied in and made a theme out of it, there's a good chance that things like the CGI not working very well, some of the storyline being a little rot and, and overdone, some of those things would have worked a little bit better, and you could have gotten a solid movie out of the, out of, you know, the parts. It just doesn't get that benefit of the doubt in this case. I mean, and it wastes a pretty solid cast did the best with a bad situation and it just falls apart and that's unfortunate. I'm not sure how we all feel as a consensus about this movie. I feel like we're all kind of in different places, but for me, I feel like this movie is a four out of 10. I don't think that it's something that's necessarily worth digging in to watch in theaters for sure. If it's a, if you're really, really interested in the Hellboy franchise and you just want to see kind of how they made it work and if there's any potential that they salvage some 
something and make a sequel out of this, then I would say, you know, wait for a streaming service and watch it for free because it's going to come to one of those eight. And our showing was completely empty and I feel like that's going to be indicative of how the box office returns come back to this movie. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We give you multiple videos every single week. And we have t-shirts available if you're interested in those as well. Those are available down in the description below. We hope you'll follow us into the Vortex. We'll see you next time.